Hello guys, welcome back again. So I'm starting a series of videos which will explain three financial statements and all related ratios that investors and analysts use to make better sense of the company. For the purpose of the learning, we'll be using Air Canada's annual report of 2019. In this video, we'll take a thorough look at the balance sheet of Air Canada. So here is a financial statement of Air Canada. It's called Consolidated Statements of Financial Position. Now those who don't know what the Consolidated Financial Statement is, then it is a financial statement for the parent company and all of its subsidiaries presented as one single economic entity. In other words, the main parent company and all of its subsidiaries and division's activities are compressed into one final statement for investors to get whole picture of the company's well-being. Alright, so now let's look at Air Canada's financial position. Please note here, all the figures are in millions. So here is what the current assets are of Air Canada at the end of year 2019. Now here on the right side, we have been given numbers for the previous year to compare and to see what numbers are carrying from previous year. Okay, so in current asset, which means this asset will be used, consumed, sold or any related activity that will take place within next 12 months. So Air Canada has $2.09 billion in cash and cash equivalents and $3.8 billion of short term investment. So in other words, Air Canada has almost $2.1 billion in pure cash and $3.8 billion on temporary investment which can be converted into cash if needed so. So therefore, Air Canada has $5.9 billion in liquid asset. Air Canada has $157 million in restricted cash. So this is the cash put aside in accordance to regulatory requirements. It's one kind of deposit for the smooth functioning of activity. Its maturity is under 12 months and therefore it's under current assets. They have 926 million in accounts receivable. So Air Canada is expected to receive this money within next 12 months. Now this receivable could be the amounts due from other airlines for interline travel or other travel agencies payment is still not received. Okay, so Air Canada has 100 million worth of fuel stocked up and 110 million in spare parts and other supplies. Prepaid expenses means future expenses have already been paid for. This could be rent payment for future or some supplies that Air Canada has already paid for and there is some other current assets. So these are the current assets of Air Canada making a total of $7.5 billion. Moving on to non-current asset which means maturity of more than 12 months. Investments, deposits and other assets. So here it says look at note 6 to know more about it. Let's look at note 6. Okay, so they have $512 million worth of asset in long-term investment, $126 million in chorus investment. So if we look at note 5, it says Air Canada bought 15.5 million shares of chorus aviation at a price of $6.25 for each, making an investment of $97 million. But the investment has gained in value. Now it is worth 126 million. So that means this investment has made profit of 29 million dollars, which should be reported in shareholders equity section of this balance sheet. We'll get to that later. Okay, and then restricted cash. As explained above, this is the cash put aside for smooth functioning of company. Aircraft related deposit and prepayments are among the deposits that Air Canada has made. And there is some other assets. This makes up a total of $936 million. Property and equipment. This could be aircrafts, flight equipments, land, buildings, etc. 
and it's one of the biggest asset of Air Canada worth 12.8 billion dollars. <clears throat> Pension assets. So 2.06 billion dollars is basically either put aside or invested to meet their future compensation obligations to their retired employees. So <clears throat> deferred income tax. So in simple words, this is the amount the company has saved on their income tax obligation. So they have basically saved 134 million dollars by deferring payment on income tax. Now let's look at intangible asset. All right, so what is intangible assets? Well, it's the asset that are not in physical substance. But for example, here as we can see, Air Canada's intangible assets are international route rights, marketing based trade names, and their technology, copyrights, patents, etc. All those paperwork is worth $1 billion in Air Canada's balance sheet. Goodwill. So in 2019, Air Canada bought Aeroplane, the loyalty program company, and paid $2.9 billion in goodwill for that acquisition. And that is called goodwill. Alright, so that's all for assets. $27.7 billion in total assets of Air Canada. Now let's look at the liabilities. First up, current liabilities. So the account payable is $2.4 billion. This payable could be to the suppliers for some supplies or for some equipment purchases that Air Canada is responsible to pay within next 12 months. Advanced ticket sales of $2.9 billion. So this, in other words, is earned earned revenue. Air Canada has received payments for the future tickets for which it needs to provide services yet. And the debt for that is $2.9 billion. Aeroplane and other deferred revenue. So this is loyalty program revenue lost. So this total is the amount of discount given to customers for those aeroplane and other loyalty points. Okay, and then we have current portion of long-term debt and lease liabilities of $1.2 billion. Now, if we look at non-current liabilities, we have long-term debt and lease liabilities of $8.02 billion. So, we can safely say that the total debt is $9.2 billion, but out of those $9.2 billion, only $1.2 billion is due within the next 12 months. Now, let's look at non-current liabilities. So, we have aeroplane and other deferred revenue. So, this is just exactly the same as explained before, that this is the revenue lost as part of loyalty program on a long term. And then we have pension and other benefits liability of $2.9 billion. Now remember here on asset column, now remember here on asset column, Air Canada has claimed it has $2.06 billion in assets to meet their pension obligations. But the pension obligation is $2.9 billion. So in other words, Air Canada has more pension liabilities than it has on assets. And then we have maintenance provision. So Air Canada has maintenance expenses of $1.2 billion. Then we have some other long-term liabilities. Of the deferred income tax. So this is the tax the company owes, but they have put this off for future. So now that gives us the total liabilities of $23.3 billion. To say, Air Canada has more assets than it has in liabilities, which is always a good thing. Alright, so now let's look at the final section of this balance sheet, which is shareholders equity. So here, as we can see, we have share capital. So Air Canada has raised $785 million by issuing more shares to the investors. And on that issuance, Air Canada has contributed surplus of $83 million. So for example, if the market value of share was only $10, but Air Canada was able to sell it for $11, so they made $1 extra on each share, and that is called surplus. Now the surplus occurs when there is a demand for that stock. Because there were higher demand for the stock, Air Canada was able to make $83 million about the par value of the share. 
and that's why it's a contributed surplus so the extra money and then we have accumulated other comprehensive income so remember as i said in investment deposit and other assets air canada had invested 97 million dollars in chorus aviation and the market value of that 97 million dollar investment is right now 126 million dollars so air canada has made 29 million dollar in profit for that investment so on that 29 million dollars of profit air canada has 4 million dollars in taxes making a total net profit of 25 million dollars so that is that has been recognized in shareholders equity here and then we have return earnings of 3.5 billion dollars now this return earnings could have been paid to the shareholders as a dividend but air canada has chosen not to instead it will keep it to drive the growth of the company now this gives us a total shareholders equity of 4.4 billion dollars all right so now we have looked at all three sections of balance sheet air canada has 27.7 billion in assets 23.3 billion in total liabilities and 4.4 billion in shareholders equity now the balance sheet can be used to compare the numbers from previous years and now that you know what each account means let's try to look at some important numbers here so as we can see here air canada's cash holding has increased in compared to last year last year at the end of 2018 air canada had 6.3 billion dollars in current assets and 5.6 billion in current liabilities so the current ratio or working capital ratio of 2018 was 1.11 in other words air canada could pay off its current liabilities and still would have had some cash on hand but if we look at 2019 here it's interesting to note that while company's current as asset has gone up by 1.2 billion dollars the current liabilities has also gone up by 2.1 billion dollars in compared to 2018 the current ratio of 2019 is 0.96 which tells us that the company has taken up more debt than it can pay off at the given time of making this statement